Welcome back, you lovely people. This is our second video for our Saturday, the 16th of September sale. And as you can see behind me, are people actually for real coming to inspect the car. So if you've been clever and liked and subscribed and been notified of our videos, you will already know this is coming out on Wednesday. You have two days. You've got Thursday and Friday and Saturday morning to come and view the cars in real life. If you can't do that, don't worry. That's why I'm here and I'm gonna to attempt to be your eyes and ears and walk you around the auction room with a little brief insight of each car. Don't forget, we have full listings, videos, book pack videos of every single car you're about to see. So if I pique your interest with something in a minute, have a proper look. If you want some more information, ring the team. If you're trying to steal a car, you can do that too. Right, here we go. The 1995 MG RV8, this is lovely this. I love an MGB Roadster. This, to me, was a piece of design genius. It's taking an icon and making it better, giving it a little bit more butch arches, a little bit more meat, and of course, a 3.9 litre V8. For that reason, one of the coolest ones, because they never did a V8 Roadster in the traditional MGB. So only when the RV8 came out that they did. This one came from Japan, which means underneath it's a lot less rusty than the British ones are. It's also had a huge amount of money, 11,000 pounds worth of exterior refresh, new bits of trim. It's had things like the cross member regalvanized. It's a very nice car. Being utterly, utterly brutal with it, as you like me to be, a little bit of micro blistering on the paint. I think a decent valetta would wet flat that and have that perfect. So some of the paintwork has just blistered in a couple of places, bonnet and boot lid. But I think spend, I don't know, 300 quid on a really good detail and get a wet flat and correction on this and you'd have a monster car, you really would. And also look, it's had a new roof, which is very expensive to do it properly. And that's been done with a proper mohair roof. You could buy that car for somewhere between 16 and 18,000. The top of this market is about 25. And I just think they're splendid. If you've never driven one of these, they are a wonderful thing. And that's the best color, that's the launch green, which really typifies this car for me. And the fact it's a Japanese import will be a lot nicer than a UK one. So moving on, got a lot of time for these as well. Blame it on James Bond. 2000 BMW Z3 2 litre, only 38,000 miles, and it's a manual. We do love an MX-5 here, but I think even more chunky and solid and even better built than an MX-5, and that's saying something, is a Z3. Have a look inside, it's very tasteful. Been in the same family since new. It's got Oxford green paintwork, which is very nice, beige leather. It's got the front side airbags and the wood trim. It's quite a nice cruise that, isn't it? The original bill of sale as well. And it's had a different gearbox service just 2,000 miles ago. It's got the luggage rack, which maybe or maybe isn't your taste. I prefer them a little cleaner myself, but that is actually very useful. It does double the boot space. So if you're planning a foreign touring holiday, there's your car. It's really clean these. You can see a lot of these very cheap on eBay because they're very snotty with crusty arches and massive mileage. And there's nothing wrong with those great little cars, but if you want a nice one, this is the one, because it's got the proper tonneau, everything's lovely, the paint's nice, the wheels are nice, it's got great tires on it. So budget between about five and seven grand for that one. And it is lovely, great color, lovely paint, super thing. Z4, Chris Bangle at his finest here, doing his wonderful work. 2007 Z4, 3 liter SI, these are great. Great little sports car, in manual as well. It is an underrated car. Don't see many of them, do you? Not that many. Really interesting bit of design from, I think, a very interesting time at BMW. I would maybe, a little bit of a headlight restoration would make that really pop. What can I tell you? 108,000 miles, fresh MOT, lovely spec, and drives really well, the team say. Have a look in there. It's got a rather vivid bit of steering wheel action going on there. With a bit of blue light coming down from the roof. Isn't it nice? What a pretty thing. Good history on that car. You're not going to spend a huge amount of money to buy it. Bearing in mind that is a three litre manual rear wheel drive BMW. You can imagine the sideways fun you can have with that when they turn the traction control off. You could buy that for between seven and eight grand. I'm going to look around. The paint is very good. Just a little bit of mopping to do. It's nice. It's got a little extra Maxim design boot kicker on it, which I like. I think it's running the wheel spaces as well. It is because they're really, really filling the arches. If you come and look at that Elliot from the back, just sits well, that does. That's got potential to be, I think, a great future classic. Just if you examine the ingredients of what that package is and how much fun you can have for relatively small amounts of money, I don't think it'd be long before they start to make really top coin. Now, Mark 10 Jags, you never find them for sale, do you? Because there's not that many of them left. Look at it. I mean, these look like a big car today, don't they? What these must have looked like back in period, I have no idea. 
So you've got your big, huge armchairs in the front, look, there you go. 1964, 3.8 this one. One former keeper, and it's a manual as well. It's had recommissioning work in February of this year. It's got a stainless steel exhaust, built by Ian Stewart. It's got the original service manual. It's got the upgraded gearbox from an XJ6 Series 3. It's got all the radio, rear picnic tables, jack. It's got a set of Michelins. I always think you can tell an owner by the tyres. Michelins would not be cheap on this. There would have been a lot of easier ways to have done it, and yet they've done it. Paint's very good. Chrome work's just starting to go a little bit, guys. So obviously, if you're looking for a concourse, pure restoration, you want to need to factor that in. But I think, to me, the real charm of this car is it's extremely presentable. A couple of tiny little bubbles on the paint. But how it looks to you on telly now, that's how it presents in real life. It really does look rather nice. Not perfect, it's incredibly clean, but just something you will use. I keep saying this, don't I? If you over restore a car, if you have it perfect, you never use it. Cars like this with a little bit of imperfection on the chrome, a couple of tiny bubbles, the wood's a little bit dry, you might want to, at a later stage, you know, a car that you can drive, enjoy, go through and have some fun with, and in the meantime, look like Ronnie Cray chauffeur which is not a bad look, I can tell you that. How much will you spend on that? Six to seven grand. It's an inexpensive motor car, ladies and gents. We've seen this car before, I cannot believe it's not sold, it's so nice. 1984 Capri, 2.8i, so the best engine, the V6, and with what we believe is a genuine 32,000 miles. And if you look inside, which I shall invite young Elliot to do, because he's sprightly and nimble, Look at that interior. That interior definitely says to me 32,000 miles. So it's only done 651 miles between 2006 and 2013. Very clean, very factory. I would say it's had some paint, particularly good and impressive and expensive paint. Being hypercritical, tiny little bit of lack of peel on the edge of the roof. A tiny bit of microbus string on that wing and that wing. But what a nice thing. What a really, really nice car that is. I think that with a bit of tiny amounts of detailing could be a very special Capri. If you look at Brooklyn's prices, they are mental. So if you can't quite afford one of those, I think a very nice 2.8 is the next best thing. Wonderful color combination, very period. And it's the blue wing of the silver. So I think you could buy that car for 20, 22. If you want a clean one that you don't need to do anything to, I say apart from a little bit of detailing and paint correction, there she is. Series 1 Land Rovers, rare, desirable, pure. If you like your Land Rover to look like they were meant to look, as in per the original design, there you go, Series 1. Love the patination on this. I think if you buy this, don't do anything. Just let these wings start to oxidise a little bit, because obviously you can see it's had brand new wings on. that have been fitted brilliantly. So this is a 55 107 wheelbase, this one. And just drink in the details, guys. So it's been recently recommissioned, so it runs. It's got loads of recent expenditure on it for things like buffers, mirrors, low windscreen, scuttle and seals. It's had a new driver's pedal box, brake overhaul, brake pipes, new handbrake parts, slave and masters, things like fuel pump, carburetor and manifold. So you've got all of where it matters. Lots of money has been spent. But I think where it's essential on an old Landy, how it looks, because what you don't want on a, any series Land Rover, is it looking like you've just bought it or just done it? This looks like it's been in the family for generations. As I say, just let those wings oxidize off or even get them patinated back. And that to me is visual perfection. And look at this. Come look at this, like the layers of paint on the roof. It's just so cool. The way it's just starting to come off to leave the aluminum underneath. I would not touch a thing on this. Really, really nice looking truck. Not huge amounts of money. Everyone says series Land Rovers are expensive. There's one with all the hard work done seven and a half to eight and a half thousand pounds. You can colour me interested on that one. This is beautiful, isn't it? As a kid, I was obsessed with these. And I think this is pretty close to what I would have wanted. So this is 1978 Land Rover 109 Series 3, this one. Really, really nice. It's got the two and a quarter petrol engine, which I love. and makes that unmistakable Land Rover sound. Matching Goodyear's all around, freewheeling hubs. It's got a new Exmoor canvas roof, which is not a cheap item if you want to go and price one up and have a look at that. It's got new seats fitted. Come and look at these seats. It's a left hooker. Look at that. Wow. It even smells new. I think they're leather, you know, guys, because it really, really smells of leather in here. I wish you could join me in here and just soak up the smell. So what is it? So it's been recently refinished in Old English White. It's just a gorgeous thing. Loads and loads of money has been spent on this car. Seven and a half to eight and a half grand. You couldn't paint it for that. Never mind the roof and the, the 
very leathery leather in here. That's just splendid. Mileage on that one, guys, is 70,000. Right engine, right spec, right color. What can I say? Beautiful. If you want one, and they say, don't worry about the left-hand drive, guys, because you'll get used to it. It's much easier to get out onto the pavement side. And when you come to sell, everybody in Europe will bite your hand off. And I would guess, I don't know, but I would guess that this car has probably come from a much nicer climate. So if we look underneath, I bet being left under, yeah, look at the chassis on this. Come and have a look at this, Elliot. So I think that's, just look at things like the cross member edges. That's not been in rusty Britain, has it? In the salt. There's another benefit of buying left hand drive, guys. Less corrosion. Great one. What's a lot of truck for the money? Now, Rover 75s, guys. I love them, I have one. I have the limo version I got from here. I think, you know, this, this is a great car. I'm gonna put myself out there and say that if you've not driven one, the dynamics of these, the styling, the fit and the finish are surprisingly good. I think that's fair to say. They deserve to have done a lot better with this car when they did. If you're into your automotive history, you'll know what was happening politically with BMW and Rover at the time. And it didn't give this car the crack of the whip it should have had. That doesn't mean it's not an awesome car. And this one, which is a V6 Club SE, automatic with 51,000 miles on, is about as special as you're gonna get. Really, you have to drive one of these. And I think this one with the mileage on will drive very, very well. Five-speed auto, really nice recorded mileage, long MOT. And here's a little trick for you. You les exempt, my friends. So if you're living in the boroughs of London and you fancy something that's interesting, inexpensive, that you can daily drive in and out of the cameras, what's left of them? There's your car. Three to four grand. Beat the system. Just think, if you save £12.50 a day, you could pay for that with that. Beautiful colour as well. Right, we all know that I love 308 Jaguars. To me, so they did, obviously, the XJ40 became the 300, and then they facelifted that with the later dashboard to become the 308. And this is an XJR 4-litre V8. Just all the yes. Come and stand here, Ellie. just look at this magnificent three-quarters view from here. This to me is the zenith of this shape. If you go all the way back to the XJ40, you can just see this is the lineage of this car, which of course was the evolution of the old 60s Jags effectively, all new body shell. That became a 300. Then they changed that dashboard to this dashboard with the three holes. It's a really pretty car. And this really went toe to toe with anything that BMW and Mercedes did dynamically. This is a fast car, it really is. Great with handbook pack, 15 stamps in the service book, the best color, low ownership count. 95,000 miles is a little higher, but with a good history, it doesn't scare me at all. Two recent rear tires. You can imagine they've been sliding. And just a lovely thing. Color combination could not be better on this. Have a look at that. Look at that, look. It's got a little bit of moderate wear, so the seats could probably do the recolonization. It's got a factory roof, which is a very nice option. Always check on these things like round the rear window. Here it is perfect. Arches on this, also very, very nice. Alloys are in mint condition. You could have all of that power, all of that speed, and these do make the best noise as well. Six and a half to seven and a half grand. So I've got the XJ Sport, which is a normally aspirated, sort of lower output version of this, and it's a really wonderful car. I've been driving it almost as mine daily throughout summer. They're so usable, guys. I wouldn't want to run one in the winter because they're too nice, but I would. You've got a couple of months of that before you tuck it away for winter and then bring it out again in April and run it all summer. What a thing. CL Mercedes, are you playing car roulette? If you bought this car, and it will not be for a huge amount of money at all, you are buying the flagship of the range. Fantastic service history, two previous owners, every MOT from 2003, every card key. It's got a fitted car cover. It has everything. It's only done 79,000 miles. Take a punt, you will not buy a nicer car than this the amount of money that this will cost. You could probably buy this for somewhere between about six and seven grand, plus your commissions. And it's the top of the range. The only one they did that's bigger than this was the 600. So you're smoking around in a silver German national racing color coupe with every option and every button works on this car as well. Factory roof, what a thing, what a thing for the price of an average family hatchback. Just fabulous, again, not much to do, tiny bit of discoloration on the headlights. That's like the work of five minutes at a Valitas. Tiny cauliflower on the badge there. There's not much to do, is there? Can't think of a nice way to travel. This is the ultimate waffle mobile. If you're gonna spend some time on the motorway in the summer, 
that's a very lovely way to do it. I'd say six to seven grand. Now, one of my favorite cars of all time, the 560 SEL. Biggest engine, monster engine, long wheelbase, so all the legroom in the back as well. Dictator spec, basically. That's what we're talking about here. Really nice on the body. This obviously had some paint. I think it's had a color change at some point. This car is a higher mileage car. It's done 218,000 miles, but anyone that knows Mercedes and if they're well-maintained, they will do that. Loads of bills, loads of factory extras on this as well. I'd say even with the color change, it's just a nice thing. Have a look at this backseat legroom. If you've got loads of kids, or you want to run an 80s limo business, look at that. Look at the room. So that's a lot of fun. And I think if you're trying to exude old money, if you're trying to turn up at a race meeting, a horse race meeting, you know, sports day, shopping, you can do whatever you want to do other than great fuel economy, you can do it in a 560 SEL. To me, it's the ultimate waft wagon. That's a great car. Got a lot of lovely Mercedes. Moving on to this, again, something I really like. Bentley T1s for me. I love a silver shadow, love a shadow too. Don't you think the grille surround on a T1 is nicer? I think a little bit smoother, a little bit more elegant, and I adore the aesthetics of these earlier cars. So this is a 68 T1, 67,000 miles, got a nice original shark radio. The chrome is very nice on it. It's got period correct Avons, rear picnic tables, and they've spent some money. It's got new front brake calipers, new flexes, new fuel pump. It's had over a grand just spent. And these are the kind of vendors that we love here at Manor Park Classics. People that bothered to get the cars correct before they put them into auction, knowing that we've got no problems, you've got no problems. Loads of invoices, loads of MOTs. Drink it in, guys. Isn't that a nice looking car? Lovely color combination again, and not expensive. I would say somewhere between 10 and 12 grand will probably buy that car. And let me open the door to a world of leather smells. Oh, there's a smell that old rollers and Bentleys have. Anyone that's ever opened that door will know what we are smelling right now. Look at that. Nicely patinated leather. Not perfect. The wood's very, very good. Leather's patinated. Either live with it or just get it reconalized. Plenty of room in the back. Look at the picnic tables. Look at this for a bit of magic. If you want to feel special, sit in the back of a, a Bentley T1. Pull that down and have your sandwiches on it. Cheers, beautiful. Say 10 to 12 grand, guys. The world has become expensive. 10 to 12 grand doesn't buy you an awful lot of car in the normal world, but come here, you could drive this. 1995 Jaguar XJ, look at this. 3.2 long wheelbase. Really nice engine, these. Relatively inexpensive to run, relatively. It's all, all relative, isn't it? But this car has done 48,000 miles. It's a particularly nice color. It's been with the current owner since 1997, and the car is only in 1995, so he bought it at two years old, and it's been with him ever since. So it's the long wheelbase model with a sunroof, which is a mega, mega spec. MOT is going back to 98, original dealer plates. And again, he's overhauled the brakes to make sure it's perfect for the sale to the tune of nearly 900 quid. Two sets of keys. It's got the uh, old dashboard look, which I love, which is the old XJ40 dashboard tarted up with the switch gear on the top, which I actually prefer, you know, to the 308 dashboard. That's me being super nerdy. So to me, this is the best of both. So it's the inside bits of the XJ40, but with the much smoother, nicer, later facelift. It's the perfect car for me. And the 3.2, you could even nurse that to 30 to the gallon, you know, if you drove like an old lady. So it's not even that unsensible. Toyota Hilux, we've all seen the Top Gear skit that they did, that when we're, nuclear bombs are dropped, it's just cockroaches and wasteland. Anything that will be left will be the Toyota Hilux. And this is a particularly nice one. It's a 1999 2.4D, one private owner from new. So every Hilux was bought to do heavy duty, apart from this one, it seems. It's just unreal. Have a look at the bed. Where you normally see dents and scabs and crust. There's a little bit of top surface corrosion, nothing you couldn't do. I would just either shilt that or just rapture it all. It would look absolutely great. But the exterior is incredible. The exterior is almost like new. And the interior, so this has only done 103,000, which is not a lot for an old Toyota. Look at that, it's like it's never been used. A tiny bit of shine on the steering wheel, but the seats are great. Dries beautifully, as you'd imagine an old, well-serviced Toyota to do. And as we say in the trade, find me another. You just won't, you won't find another nice, short cab Toyota like this that isn't absolutely ruined. 
So again, a really usable truck. Either keep it if you're a Toyota collector, there it is, the one that you're missing. And if you want something that's a nice, sensible commercial vehicle that you could do another 150,000 miles in and won't cost the earth. Because if you look after that, that will never lose money. So there is a free truck for your business. And it's a Toyota. Go to any dealer, they can service it for you. A lot of us have shovets in our family bloodline and I certainly spent a lot of time in the back of one of these as a kid. I think they're a fantastic looking thing. 1980 Chevette 1.3L, original factory spec car and it really is very, very original this one. I would wager a lot of this paint is original paint. It's certainly original interior, 42,000 miles. And just looking really straight and level, not concourse perfect guys, there's little blebs and marks in the paint. But this is a nice shell. It's had some paint on the roof, you can see that for sure, but just honest. This is how I like classic cars to be. Not over restored, not loads of paint, not loads of work. Obviously it's had money spent mechanically, been used daily this car, had loads of new parts fitted to it. It's a pretty honest little thing. You just don't see any cars like this. Four doors obviously weren't as loved as two doors. Hatchbacks were the ones that everybody tried to save for competition use. This has just been somebody's family car. If you want to make this part of your family, what a great thing. It's not gonna be a lot of money. Three and a half to four and a half grand would buy you that. And the thing we're starting to get in the classic car world now and appreciation is thanks to events like Haggerty's Festival of the Unexceptional, just normal family cars that were part of all of our lives for so long, people are starting to see the value in collecting them. And I don't know what the number of these left are, but it won't be many. You won't see many of these at your local car show. Or these. If you want a Mini with a bit more boot space, Riley Alf. This is a 67 Riley Alf Mark III. Very rare survivor from the 60s in a very 60s colour. And the thing about these were, obviously people like Wood and Pickett went and made minis much more posh and inviting and exciting inside. But if you look inside the Riley Elf, this was done from the factory for you. Let me open the door for you, Elliot. Have a look at that. So you can pass there. Have a sit inside there. So it's like being in a very posh mini with a very big boot. It's got a great history. It's pretty much a factory spec car, this one. As far as we can see, there's nothing been changed. So it's all original. Driver's handbooks are with it as well. And it's had a restoration quite a while ago, but there's a full photographic record of that. So you can see all the work that was done. I just think they're super cute. All the fun of a Mini, with a bit more practicality and luxury. What's not to love? And also as well, bizarrely, despite being rarer and better appointed, they're cheaper than equivalent Minis. If this was a 67 Mini in that condition, it would not be the six or seven grand you could buy this car for. So for that reason, I would like to own that because it's rarer. One for the Harry Potter fans, 61 Ford Anglia 105E Deluxe. This has had a ton of money spent on it, this car. Over 11,305 pounds spent in the last five years. Two former keepers. What can I tell you? It's MOT exempt, of course, as was our lovely little Riley. So you don't have to MOT it. I would strongly advise that you always MOT your classics, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. So it's had bodyweight restoration, in 2016 to some five grand mechanical work with a crankshaft regrind, rebore new pistons, piston rings, new main bearings, big ends, cylinder head, oil pump, engine service. John was motor care to the tune of two and a half grand, full wax oil underneath, matching fire stones, new clutch and radiator, comprehensive history. It's got a lot of money, lots of receipts with this car, guys. People love them because of the Harry Potter connection, but even before that, they're just a really nice car to drive. What Ford were very good at doing apart from shrinking American style, which they've done brilliantly with this car, is creating cars that use quite ordinary components that were really nice to drive. It's what they've always been good at, to be fair. Eight and a half to nine and a half would buy you that car. But as we've said, that's less than the bills that put it together. I do like this very much indeed. This is a 1988 Jaguar XDS 5.3 convertible. That much you can see. A couple of bits to make this notable. Number one, has a very nice roof on it, a mohair one too. It's a lovely color. But why it's interesting, two things. One, it's a Cat C repaired car. So don't let that put you off because all that means realistically, Cat C, it's towards the bottom end of the trouble that you might have. But all it means is at the time, if there was damage to the vehicle, it was beyond economic repair by the insurer, which on a convertible doesn't take much. Leather's very nice, roof's very nice. But it's just had a lot of money spent, 3,600 pounds at the Haynes Motor Museum where they actually recommissioned this car. So it has an unbroken run of owners. It's got very good history from 2002 onwards to the present day. It's actually quite a nice thing. I really say, I would drive this, I would own this car. Because it's got that Cat C marker on it, which isn't as scary as you need to worry about necessarily, it's only six to seven grand. So if you want to smoke about in a car that looks like you spent at least twice that, and with a great history and with a wonderful set of bills quite recently by a very reputable place, there's a nice car for you. 
how about this? Do you just never go wrong with what we call a Bobby Ewing SL? There you go. 300 SL, so a nice sensible engine spec, this one, 1988. So 90,000 miles or running in, as we say, on an old Merc. UK supplied, right-hand drive, really nice color as well. Original stamp service book, and it's got both its hard and soft tops, which you must always check if you're buying an SL, folks. If it hasn't got the hard top, run away or negotiate accordingly because they are hideously expensive. Have a look inside, this is very nice. Lots of light colors, which always makes it feel very big and airy. But these 300s are a really nice compromise. You know, they just pull themselves along quite nicely, not too expensive. It's had about a thousand pounds worth spent on it, just recommissioning it and tidying it, ready for the sale. So again, a lovely conscientious vendor that's bothered to make sure it runs nicely. All the places where these go, corrosion wise, it's had paint, I would say, a little while ago. It's not bad at all. A couple of tiny micro blisters in the paint there. Arches are very, very nice. Will not be a huge expensive car, that one. In the current market, maybe 25 to 27, just old money. These never go out of style. They've never been out of style. They're just classy, they work anywhere, whatever you want to do with it. And it's a classic that you can drive almost every day. That's the thing. I wouldn't, again, drive it in the salt, but through eight, nine months of the year, that's a car that you can use all the time. If you want to be a bit more cost effective, how about this SL320 again? Really nice example in my favorite colorway. So it's a 1996, it's got the facelift front on it, 114,000. It's had a new mohair roof in 2018. It's got all of its spare keys. And it's just a really nice car, this one. Have a look at this, Elliot. It's got the latest steering wheel, electric seats. Again, just really usable. So good history with this one, but you'll only pay four to five grand. So just think about that for a moment. Not an expensive car, a car that you can use all the time. Funnily enough, bits for these cars aren't hideous. Servicing one of these isn't as bad as you think, particularly if you find a good specialist and four to five grand. The paintwork is really very good on this. I'm just having a quick look around it for you now. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it is a very nice car, that. I would like to own that very much. Four to five thousand pounds. Just come in here, look at the, the front of this car. If you're as old like me, I can remember, this is a 95, I can remember when these came out and I can remember seeing these, thinking what a good looking car they were and haven't they aged well? And people will just assume that you've had it for a long time. Even the sun visors stay up, look. Yeah, that is mega. Treat yourself. And also, when's the best time to buy a convertible? As we come out of summer, the price is always a little bit softer as you go into autumn, so you could get a bargain. And talking of bargains, Come with me, an XJ6 3.6, there you go. Our two favorite words in the auction catalog are no reserve. And this is a no reserve, 1987. It's got 1500 on the odometer. I would say that's probably had an Odo change at some point. Stored for 20 years. It's had a significant recommission to get it here. It's got the 3.6 liter. It's got some history, but not perfect. But the fact it's been stored for 20 years suggests to me and you, it hasn't seen an awful lot of action which you don't understand because it looks really, really nice. That door doesn't open. No, well, there you go. There's work to do. She's a fixer-upper, but she's very, very tidy and it's a very nice color combination. But if you want an inexpensive Jag that looks really good, and I've spoken at length today of my love for this shape, the XJ40, the 300, the 308, I think it's just a really nice period of Jaguar design. Paintwork is not bad. A Little bit of peel there. You want to do the bonnet again. But maybe this is your starter classic. Maybe this is what's going to get you into the hobby. You could buy that for not a lot. And then just tidy it as you go. MGB Roadster, again, the perfect starter classic. If you're looking for a car, inexpensive to buy, inexpensive to insure, monster, monster parts backup. Wonderful companies like MGOC Spares will get you anything for this car, including a whole new shell tomorrow. You can literally order it today. You can have it tomorrow. This one's on 64,000 miles. Let me tell you the spec of this while Elliot gives you a tour. This is a desirable overdrive model. It's got the chrome wires. It had a full bare metal respray in 2016, which cost over five and a half grand. Been upgraded to an unleaded front disc brakes. It's had an interior refresh. It's one shows this car. It's got new hood, new frame, new hood cover. Just runs super sweet. The guys have driven this. Door shuts are nice. It's had loads of money spent on it. Just a nice thing, just a very nice thing. You don't need to do an awful lot to this. You could buy it for 10 to 12 grand, which is probably about 
less than half of what it costs to build. MGBs are an underrated classic. I've just done a video actually on YouTube on the Car and Classic channel on what an underrated classic they are because they're handsome, they drive really well. Dynamically, they are surprising. If you've not driven an MGB Roadster ever or recently, have a go in one, you will be very pleasantly surprised. Moving on, another XAS convertible. This one's a little nicer, this one. A little bit later, not a cat to see this one. 97,000 miles, full book pack, original wallet. It's got air con, heated seats, great specification. It's been used as a toy, I think it's fair to say. Looking at the condition of it, this has been a high days and holidays car. And they're a nice spec, these later cars. 1990, they really had sorted this car out. Two seats with a luggage rack in the back and a massive boot. And it's just, as I say, just been used infrequently, but serviced regularly. Good history file with it. Lovely looking car. And that is 10 to 12 grand. It just blows my mind how inexpensive these are versus the perceived value of the car, plus how nice they are to live with. A Jaguar XCS maintained and running well is the perfect waft. If you want to waft along a coastal road down to the south of France to your holiday home in Italy, why not do it in this? I think you'd struggle at three times the price to find anything nicer. Slightly different convertible vibe now. A bit more Essex, there's nothing wrong with that. My dad's from Romford. 1989 Ford XR3i convertible with a great service history. And what do we always check on old Fords? The seat bolsters. And they are really quite nice on this one. They're all there. The tiniest amount of sag, but I think we'll allow that because she's an old lady. It's an 123,000 miles, original spec, full factory service pack. Recently had a timing belt and service, which is very nice, thank you very much. Great color. And also I do love an XR with RS turbo wheels on. This has got the RS turbo wheel, which is a very nice upgrade. Everybody did it in period. It was the cool thing to do. So although it's technically non-correct, I think it looks good. What would buy you that, do you reckon? Five and a half to six and a half grand. Can't stress enough, these XR3 convertibles, loads of fun, bit of nonsense. They've actually gone through being kitsch, round to cool again. I was at a car show the other day and some very cool looking dudes rocked up in one of these and everyone was giving them love. If you want a car to take to Radwood next year for not ridiculous amounts of money, XR3 iCab in black. Another lovely Roadster, where we're we looking? There she is, beautiful 73 Roadster. Over 6,000 pounds spent on recommissioning work in 2023. So if you're looking for a car with all the headaches taken away from you, this car only eight months ago was having a ton of money spent. It's been with the current owner since 94. It's got the overdrive, which is always nice to have. Nice mountainy wooden wheel. Tan leather, it's got a little hole in the passenger seat. Just pop that one out for you to see. And just a full workshop manual and lots of bits and pieces. Again, let's have a look at the bodywork. So the bodywork's good. I'm going to give the bodywork a seven. A couple of tiny little blebs and cauliflowers. But in some ways, I'd much rather see that. Like I always say, if I can see a car that's sat in its paint for a long, long time, you know where you are. A couple of blooms, tiny little chrome blooms on the bumper. But there is nothing for this car that you can't buy inexpensively and tomorrow from people like our friends at MGOC Spares. Just such a simple, wonderful car to look after. And you can fix it all yourself. And this is the fun with an MG, guys. Not just a great car to drive, and they are superb. They're a Sunday Tinker car. They're a car that you can, with sensible amounts of money, have some fun with. If you want to get into a car that you can learn, that there's loads of online guys for, loads of books for, MGB all day long. Not going to be a lot of money, six to seven grand. And again, if you look at the money that's just been spent recommissioning in it, an utter, utter bargain. And that's the beauty of a lot of these cars, to get them ready for sale. People have spent huge amounts of money and you don't have to. Now this is the run out. This is obviously what they were doing with the MGs at the very, very end of their life. The last cars that came from Abingdon look like this, the LE. This is number 217 of 421 made. It's done 102,000 miles. It's had a new hood, which has been very nicely fitted, looking at that. Newly refurbished wheels, new set of Michelins, and we always know that good tyres represent good owners. Cheap owners do not fit good tyres. I tell you that for nothing. It's got the original plaque on the dash, which is very nice. And it does represent a slightly sad part of the MGB story, which was the end of it. And I know the Europa bumpers aren't for everybody, but they are very practical. If you like to park by touch in the car park, you can't beat them. And actually, if you look at other federalised bumpers from this period, if you look at some of the things that were happening in America, they're actually quite tasteful in the grand scheme of things. So what does it cost to own the end of the story, the end of the line, the end of an era? Well, seven to £9,000. And this is really nice. It's had some good paintwork. 
It's in lovely condition. It's got the original interior. I would drive that all day long. The other thing is, guys, as well, if you're six foot four like me, you can fit in an MGB. They have extraordinary amounts of legroom, which is unusual for a 60s car, because most 60s cars have terrible legroom. These don't. Moving on, another one, prettiest thing ever, this. I'm in love with this just because of the color and the spec. So I love a chrome bumper car. This is a 69 MGB GT. And if you don't know, the GT, which is obviously the coupe with a very practical hatchback and rear seat, was designed by Pininfarina. So Pininfarina actually consulted on all of this bit. It's why it looks so resolved. It was designed after the original Roadster, but it looks like it was designed first. Very clever piece of design. Original banjo wheel, which if you come and look through, Elliot, I think are the prettiest. And this colour is called Mineral Blue, guys. It's just adorable. We think the mileage is correct at 83,000. Chrome works really, really nice. Just a super presentable car. A little bit of sagging on the seat bolster, which makes me think it's probably been there for a long, long time, or is the original. But just pretty, isn't it? It's just such a nice car. Have a look online. We've got loads of photographs of this car. Loads of shots of us driving it as well. But you could buy this car. Are you sitting down? Five and a half to six and a half grand. Now, bearing in mind it's got really nice paint on this. You can't paint an MG for that. So, if you're thinking of restoring one, why bother? Come and buy this one. You'll be driving it by Sunday. That's much more fun. Now, from one iconic sports car to another, the Mazda MX-5 NC. Now, this is the folding hardtop. So, why is that good? Loads of reasons that I think the NC, which is the third generation, is one of the best ones. Number one, again, if you're tall, it's the only one you can really fit in. There's a little bit more room there, a physically larger car. This is the folding hardtop, which makes it mega practical and very secure. If you have to park on the street, you'll never get anybody breaking into your roof. 89,000 miles, which on a well-maintained Mazda is nothing. These would do 200,000. Two litre engine, air con, heated seats, recent service, and only four owners. So to me, this is screaming, usable, practical, sensible sports car. And these roofs are absolutely fabulous. The fact that they just all tuck away. So you don't really lose any of the good look of the car, but you gain so much. And actually, they're much quieter and slightly more rigid with these roofs on. Paint works really quite decent. Tiny, tiniest amount of micro blistering on the top there where the roof sits and sort of rubs it away. Arches are great. Inner sills are great. And you could buy that car, my friends, for two and a half to three and a half grand. That's ridiculous. What sort of car for the money? All it needs really to make it nice, a little bit of a polish, a bit of a headlight restore, so stuff you can do yourself at the weekend. You could be smoking that round. And of course, if you want to use it as your daily, because it is the folding hardtop, very practical in the winter. Now, the Austin 1100 Saloon back here, you don't see them very often, do you? Which I think is a shame, because it's such a pretty little car. This, to me, is BMC doing really fun stuff at the height of their power. So 1967 car, they kind of looked quite dated then if you look at other stuff that was available. But I think they look very pretty now. Again, very usable, very, very easy classic to drive. Quite a lot of driving schools had these back in the day. Manual car, MOT exempt course, three former keepers, really nice inside now. It's got Harry Moss period radio, which is a nice touch. And no reserve. It's a great looking thing, isn't it? Paintwork's been on, I would say, relatively recently. It's quite a lot of it. So again, you could do a lot with this paint. I think a really good detailer could flat that back and make that absolutely stunning. Looks like it's had a lot of paint. And it's just, it's just mega. Rear door's locked. But no reserve. You tell us what you think it's worth. On sale from the first click, as they say. Another lovely SL. We've got a lot of great SLs in this sale. If you do want one, you'll find one I think that suits you. This is an 81. It's been with the current owner for 31 years and it's done 123,000 miles. Interestingly, because it wasn't standard, this has got ABS brakes and a Blaupunk radio. MIT is going back to 1986 and the original bill of sale. So you, I think you're building up a picture in your head. This one is a little bit more provenance than usual. It isn't immaculate, but it is very, very tidy. You can see where the roof's been sitting on here. And we do have the hard top with this one as well. Automatic, but it's the 500 guys, which means it's the full fat. It's the one that makes all the noise and all the power. And they really are very special, but not a lot of money. This car will be four to five thousand pounds. It's an inexpensive motor car. It's gonna need a little bit of work and a little bit of love to make it good again, but everything is there for you to enjoy and it's by far the best engine. This one, you can see the spread of the market as well, can't you? 1987 420 SL, this one. Again, with both hard and soft tops. 
What do you want to know other than the fact that it's really quite tidy? Five former keepers, 17 stamps in the service book. Got metallic paint, cruise control. It's got the desirable rear seat, which is actually really worth having as well. And we think there's only 300 of these left. Tiny amounts of blebs on the arches. Paintwork is really quite good on this, I have to say, particularly on the roof. So you haven't got a lot to do here, guys, you know. Just have some fun with it. Again, a lot of these cars are just cars that if you want to perfect them, spend the odd weekend, the odd 100, 200 quid here and there making them really nice. And this is a great example of that. And that is 14 to 16. That is a really nice car. Best colour from Merck, the German national racing colour as well. Moving on to another favourite of mine. This was in a previous sale. I was surprised it didn't sell because of the colour, the specs. So it's a 65 Beetle, this one, 1200, one of the nicest years. And the reason being, if you come around the back, Elliot, these 60s cars have a much nicer rear aspect. If you look at the rear lights, they're smaller and cuter. And then your deck lid comes all the way down where on the 70s cars they're squared off. So they're a lot prettier. The colour couldn't be nicer for me. This is originally from Zetland Garage in Southport. But why it's special is we think that the 34,000 miles this car shows are genuine because everything that we've seen supports that, certainly the condition. And also most of the panels are original. It's got day mouldings wings, which if you know your Volkswagen is very high quality fiberglass wings. So the only place where these can go is on the corrosion on the wings here that's been that's been done so they'll never go rusty because they're plastic wings and everywhere else where beetles do corrode like inside the heater channels the door bottoms are all fabulous so there's a car that doesn't need a lot it's the original interior never restored you can either choose to leave that as it is or restore it make it a little bit nicer but what a pretty car i mean we estimated that at seven to eight thousand and i love it another little bit of mini americana here 1962 hillman super minx if you want to recreate your own version of Greece on your driveway, this is a great way to do it. I think these are a good looking car, these. 50, so it says 5,000 miles, so I'd imagine that's gone around. So let's say 105,000 miles, I would imagine. With an amazing history file. So looking at this, there's a few bits of tidying to do. The roof's actually in really nice order if you look. That looks like it's been on a while. And the hood mechanism is very nice and free. Seats patinated but lovely. So there's work to do. It's MOT exempt, this one. And they fitted a lot of new parts. So seven and a half to eight and a half grand would buy you that. But again, this to me is a wonderful car because it's that miniature Americana that we did so well. It's got a brush painted dashboard. At some point, somebody's done that with a brush. You could flat that and make that really nice, but isn't that a pretty thing? And again, it's one of those cars that you don't see a huge amount of. Very, very well proportioned design, I think these are. And again, eminently usable in the nicer months. Seven and a half to eight and a half. Have a look. It's obviously had some work a while ago and it's sat in it for a long time. And, and for me, it could be nicer for that. Here's an Eiffel for you. Getting into super usable modern day classics, which we love so much here at Manor Park Classics. This is great. So 2000 XK8 four litre. And this is, you know me, I love a body kit. This is the Arden body kit. So it's got a little bit more meat and a bit more wallop than the standard XK8. Also, if you look inside, it's got a very much a look at me interior. Now this is gonna split people into two camps. This is either you love this or you hate this. Cause that's quite larry, isn't it? But me, I absolutely love it. So it's got a unique appearance. I can't imagine they made many to this spec. It's an individual color. You had to go to Jaguar and specify and one imagines pay an enormous amount of money for that. The body kit I love and tons and tons of history, but not an expensive car. Imagine if that was a contemporary DB7 Volante, you'd be Loads of money. You could buy this car for seven and a half to eight and a half grand with 73,000 miles on the clock and loads of history. I am feeling that. Although it's got the split rims on as well, which is a very rare, very desirable wheel. It's got a lot going for it, hasn't it? I do think these are underrated and underpriced and that cannot last. Be the one that takes advantage of it. So we've got from one extreme, Jaguar convertible, to the other, British Race Green XJS. 5.3, 102,000 miles, automatic. There you go, which look do you want to go for? One for the lads, one for the dads, I think here. So this one's got a dealer book pack with it, 14 stamps in there, really nice classic color combination as well. Lots of invoices and receipts and it's factory correct spec with an airbag as well. Your safety is your watchword. And a matching set of Pirellis. 
And I would say either a very unused or a recently updated rear hood bag as well. That's very pretty, isn't it? That's a car you'll never go wrong with. You cannot put a foot wrong with a British Racing Green XGS convertible. But I can tell you about the bodywork, it's really quite nice. I would be super pedantic, just to a correction, if you mopped this, it's such a big flat panel on the back of an XGS. You can see over the years, the wash marks. I think a good detailer on this, colour correcting, three, 400 quid, spend a day or two, would just transform this car. They really would. But it's very lovely, very tidy, very presentable and very usable. And at under 10,000 pounds, what a way to travel. Now this car is very special, so we must do it justice. This belongs to a good friend of mine, actor, screenwriter, legend, thespian, Tony Pitts. Now he really did for a long time try to find the perfect 996 turbo. He's a 996 guy. You're either a 996 guy or a 997. And he found it with this. So turbo, four wheel drive, probably the best color, an insane interior on this, like the cleanliness and the condition of this. But then the car has done 22,000 miles. Monster history with it. I actually drove this car myself from the south coast to the auction room. It drives like new. But then if you saw the service history and where it's been, looked after by Cridford's, hugely respected specialist, the car wants for nothing. If you'd like one, it won't be cheap because the best never is. To bank on about 50 grand to take this home, but what a thing. And again, 996s are just starting to reach the point in the marketplace now where people have realized what a great car they are. And because they're smaller, lighter than the 991 and the 992, they really are a little bit more nimble. They're just such a lovely thing to drive. So have a look, pull the history file, have a look at the photos and the videos. If you really want one, that's the one you want to take out. So you bank on about 50 grand to win that. Coming back here, very cute. This little Singer 9 4AB Roadster, just super usable, super pretty. I'm gonna walk around here so Elliot can have a look. And actually a reasonable amount of legroom for one of these post-war cars. Original spec with weather gear, recently recommissioned with a new head gasket rocker box, some gasket and head studs. The engine's been, re uh, been rebuilt with new main and big end bearings and somebody has very sensibly put an alternator on as well. Loads of brochures, manuals, all sorts of good stuff. Just cute and pretty. And as I say, because the market for these cars is gently softening, because obviously the market, the demographic people that want to buy them is gently softening as well. Not a huge amount of money, six to seven grand would buy that. If you just want a bit of fun, really. Something cute, I guarantee if you took this to your local on a Sunday afternoon, people would gather around this way more than if you took a Ferrari, Lamborghini. And the amount of friendly smiles and waves you get when you drive this, as we did when we took it on our test drive, is unbelievable. But well, somebody must want to buy this beautiful little Sprite. Here you go, Austin Healy Sprite, 1958. And this has got the Shells, the aftermarket body kit made by A.G. Thorpe on this. But just a great car. It's got the side screens that bolt in. It's got the bucket seats. It's just a bit of fun. It's, dare I say, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than a standard Sprite. A little bit more aerodynamic than a standard Sprite. Three former keepers, mini light wheels. It's just kind of a typical... The thing that people were building in the 60s, they'd build specials, so they'd buy like a Spridget, as it was called, take the front and rear off, put fiberglass panels on, make it cool and unique. And this was very much, at the beginning of the kit car industry, what people would do in the 1960s with old 1950s sports cars. And it's a great example of it, and you don't need a huge amount of money to buy it. Five and a half to six and a half thousand pounds would buy you that car. And I wager, although it's not the most practical car in the world, you'd have a lot of fun. If you want a more practical roadster, Going back to the Mazda MX-5, so this is an interesting car. I'm going to be at the Mazda MX-5 Owners Club do on Sunday and we are celebrating 25 years of the Mark II. Really good looking car, I think, these. Designed by the same person that designed the Dodge Viper, which you can probably see if you look at the front, actually. This one's been with the same owner for 17 years, two former keepers. This is the Montana model, which gives you all sorts of fun stuff, including this very nice leather interior and the wooden steering wheel. The alloys were refurbished in 2022. It's got 18 stamps in the book. It's had a brand new cam belt, which you always check on an MX-5 in August 2023. And it's got its correct hard top and a very nice soft top. Two sets of keys. Oh, look at, look at the, look, I'm gonna come in here if you can focus on this. Look at that history, if you can just see there. Look at that. As we all know, Japanese cars that get well serviced go forever. I've got a funny feeling this one's gonna go forever. So higher mileage, but monster service history all stamped up and accredited so again inexpensive car three to four thousand pounds would let you take that home go sideways for fun it'll do another hundred thousand miles if you continue to look after it and it's just had the cam belt done what's not to love this is cool 
This is very cool. If you can't quite afford a Chevette HSR and they're getting very expensive now, here's a bit of fun. Still a three door, still cool. It's got bucket seats in, it's got its trip. It's got everything you need for a bit of club rallying. This rallied in period and with the current owner since 1989, five former keepers. We think actually it's the second oldest Chevette actually known in any guys, road guys or rally guys. It's got a new RAC Motorsports Association logbook. MOT is going back to 1988 and the original handbox is just fun, but look, it's got caging. Look at this guys, it's just a little bit of, little bit of fun. It's like a GT3 RS Chevette. You're just ready to go, either drive it as a street car and be the coolest kid in the street or just have some fun. Eight to 10 grand because the condition of the shell is remarkable, I have to say. A couple of tiny blebs, but she's a rally car, isn't she? She's not a show car. But Chevette's go sideways very easily. And this one has all the right bits. So let me give you the spec of this, guys, because this is a bit saucy. So 2.3 single fast cam road rally spec with twin 48s, ported head, rev limiter, electronic ignition, four speed gearbox, which has been built up, to take a bit more torque, sealed petrol tank, uprated bill steins, fuel lines and brake lines, brake bias, plumbed in fire extinguisher. When this was built in 86, in 1986, it's cost £7,000 to build in 1986, which is God knows how much today. And recently had a new clutch water pump and battery in August. So again, they've just gone through it to get it ready for sale. So you could rally that in loads of events. You could drive it as a cool street car or just have a bit of fun if you're a Vauxhall collector. I can't think of anything nicer. Now that is the end of our second video, guys. There's another car video and one more bike video after this. Please like and subscribe, hit the notifications. And of course, head over to manaparkclassics.com and register for bidding. And I will see you on Saturday the 16th.